Last night when we watched the movie, um, which was I know a lot everybody wants to hear, but um, it, you know, there were images in the movie that, that drew to pains uh, or my uh, perceived pain from the past of um, loss and love and, and death. And so I would like to know how to break that tie, to break that association without perception of pain, of perceived pain. So when I watched the movie, I came in into um, this course with um, very open, very open and very accepting and um, not needing to see differences, but, but sameness and so on. And I, so I had that sense. But then these pains came up in the movie and caused me frustration of things and, um, and distraction from what I'm learning here. Um, and it caused a, a, um, an interference that um, kind of carried through until I identified that the frustration was coming through um, into like lunch today. Mm. So, these pains and interference, and these associated sense of loss that the movie reminded me of, got in the way of my learning and my opening and accepting my you know, path to oneness or misunderstanding. So, in the sense of this identity, if I, I, and I'm trying to think of this and, and from what I've learned from you these pains, associated pains in my body, in my heart, with my life, I need to be free of these, or, or have a different perception of these, to, to take one more, to, to get closer to my um, true self. To, Really loving myself and being loved and, um, and in a sense of where you're talking about grievances being a call to love, you would be called to love yourself. In my yes. So how do you how do you free yourself from from those things? Yeah, it's a very good question in the sense that 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 the pain a separation has been dissociated, in other words, been pushed way down into the mind and out of awareness. And so, the healing means that you have to invite what was dissociated or what was repressed and pushed out of awareness back up into awareness. You know, the idea is instead of being asleep and unconscious, having an unconscious mind, is to be fully conscious, wholly conscious of everything. Like they say in, in uh, quantum physics and in a lot of the research on the brain, you know, and so forth about how we're just using a sliver of our capacity, our potential. We want to open up that sliver to become fully conscious. Mm -hmm. And it's, to the ego, it's a painful process even to allow those memories back into awareness. Uh, it's like a, a, like a trigger, like you watch that movie and it, it kind of reminds you and and triggers these associations that are in there so that a healing can occur, a, a reassociation, a re, you might say a reconfiguration or a reinterpretation can occur which brings the peace. So um, honestly that's basically what the spiritual journey is. I mean it's when people say, I, I wish I could do this pain free, you know, Please tell me that pain is optional. And I say, well, it is optional. But for most people, the mind is so addicted to it and clings so firmly to it that once it's exposed, it seems to be uncomfortable uh, or intense. And there's, there's a lot of intensity that comes with, with this, these memories and these associations coming to the surface. So, 
What's coming to mind is a movie that we use a lot of times uh, in our teaching called Way of the Peaceful Warrior uh, with Dan Millman. It's his true story of, of his life where he's this gymnast and, and he meets this teacher, Socrates, who, who suddenly appears on top of a, a gas station, a service station one day and rocks his world. And the, it's quite an intense teaching-learning relationship because you could say at some level Dan Millman has, has invited the healing to occur and Socrates has appeared as the teacher and you might say as far as pushing his buttons or, or bringing up these false associations it happens quite rapidly and, and, and with a lot of intensity. Um, you know, we do have to move through the darkness to the light and so as we're moving through the darkness, the ego is wanting to interpret what's happening as threatening. You know, it's wanting to shut down the whole process of healing because it's saying, you know, it's too painful, it's too hurtful, and, and in the end the ego believes it will lead to destruction, which is the ego's definition of healing. <laughs> it's getting destroyed, <laughs> and it's determining that this whole process is destructive. So. I think what you've done, you know, is you have a willingness to heal, so you came like to the movies and then you allowed yourself to feel those feelings. Um, and this is a good thing, you know, not a bad thing. And it does seem to take time in the sense of processing time, like you said, until lunchtime today you were just really giving your attention and energy. Honestly, I was very frustrated and I was evaluating you. And I was like, you know, I was talking to Sam and I was like, why am I doing this? Because I didn't come into this like this. Why am I evaluating David? And he's like, I think that movie brought some things up for you. And I was like, no, I think you're right. Because I was making it, my ego was make, trying to pick apart, pick apart something with like the movie or you, or I was trying to make it about other things, not the feelings that it brought up in me. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it caused pain, frustration, and, and all of those um, very, um, it was just, I was starting to dive things up, yeah. trying to find a reason out, way out. Which, yeah. You know. And that's typically how it works with, with movies or with different scenarios or with relationships. You know, you notice how you, you engage in a relationship and you feel a, a strong, uh, attraction and a call into the relationship and your heart seems like it's starting to open up and then it's the same thing that happens when these these negative emotions, these upsetting emotions start to come up then this other, this ego voice kicks in and it's going to try to explain away uh, the reason, the external reason for these emotions. Get away from this person, you know, avoid this and so on and so forth and it's again trying to protect itself from being exposed. It's like the ego is like this spider that's down like this dark well. And if you start to heal, let's say you take your flashlight and you start to shine your flashlight down in the well, the spider will move away from the light uh, because it needs darkness. So it'll, the light beam goes down and the spider moves over. Then you move the beam over and the spider moves again. And then eventually you say, this is enough of this, and you get a big beam, <laughs> and you light up the whole well, and the ego is, <laughs> you know, like, yikes, <laughs> like, like, game over. Uh, when, when, when you expose all of the darkness to the light, it's game over for the ego. You, you will never be tempted by it again. You will, you will laugh at its voice, and so much so that, you know, like that John Denver song, Let Me Drown in Your Laughter, the ego literally dissolves in laughter. Because mm -hmm. the laughter is so strong and so intense that, that eventually it just, it just feels like laughter is all that there is. You know, that you can laugh at anything and everything and there's no ego temptation <coughs> to try to blame somebody or, or there's no emotions, there's no uh, negative emotions, no upset or hurt or pain. So it's a reinterpretation that has to occur in order to be free of that pain. And that's, that's basically what we're going to 
do this whole weekend. We're going to show clips, everything we talk about in terms of metaphysics, practical application, giving examples, doing experiential exercises, it's all aimed at... I did uh, find it interesting, just to uh, approach the thought of, of my observing myself when I came in, and then when these pains came up, and then my reaction to it, as far as the sense of uh, um, this, other, this other voice, like the voiceover in the movie, the negative voice speaking at the ego, um, trying to attack, you know, I'm not, uh, to, and I think it was in a sense to, per, in a, in a sort of a protective mechanism, at least, mm. you know, uh, something learned, yes. something like that.